healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. I'm going to talk about the gift on this morning. That is our subject for today, the gift. And we're going to be using this subject coming from 1 Peter 4 and 10. And also I'm going to be coming from Proverbs 18 and 16. 1 Peter 4 and 10, Proverbs 18 and and 16. Before we get into the word, let us go in prayer over the word that's going to come forth. Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Father, I ask you right now to humble me, to hide me near your cross so that the people don't see Marlena Lewis, that they see you and your Holy Spirit through me, Father. Father, I ask that the word go forth north, south, east, and west, and don't allow it to come back forth. Father, save somebody today. Let somebody be exalted today in their guilt today. And Father, I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise of what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 The guilt. That is going to be our subject on today. And if you're just tuning in, we're going to be talking in the... I, I, also, I always read from the King James Version. I'm so sorry. I never repeated that before. But it's going to be in the King James Version. Okay. First Peter. Four and ten. <clears throat> As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man ministers, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us go over now to Proverbs 18 and 16. A man give maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. He that is in the first in his own call seeth just, seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searches him. The lot causes contention to cease and protect between the mighty. I want to focus on number 16, a man's gift maketh room for him. We have heard this scripture talked about so many times. And, you know, we, 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 and we use it so much in such a, a different context of, of a gift. And I want to, um, us to go into the definition of what a gift is and what a calling is. Because sometimes we know uh, we, we've been mis mistaken a gift for a calling. So for what we go into deeper into this word and what I believe God is trying to show me, I want to exercise what it is, what's the difference between a gift and a calling. Before we go into the definition of a gift and a calling, the Bible says that in Proverbs 18 and 16 that a man gifts make room for him. What is room? To broaden, expand, cause great opportunity. Make it is an action verb. That means causes to happen. So this is very important when we say room. You know, I'm going to make room for you. If a guest comes to your house and you say, I'm going to make a room for you, you give them that opportunity to stay with you. It's an opportunity. You cause it to happen because if you didn't make the room for them, then guess what? They would have to go out and get a hotel. They would have to make some type of other reservation. So it's careful to see what, when these Bible talks about room, that this is an action word. This is something that the Lord is doing for you. He's giving you the opportunity. He's going to make it happen for you. So before we go into the calling and the gifting definition, I wanted to bring out what does room mean? Because we use that term so lightly. Room is an action word. It is saying that, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm the only one that's going to make room for the gift that you have. 
And you said, well, you know, how are you going to make room? What are you going to do? He's going to move people out of the way. He's going to cause things to happen for you. It's an action word. He's going to cause things to happen. Again, it's a precious stone. Whatever it turns, whichever way it turns, it prospers. A gift is something that is given by God. When I looked up the definition, it says that something got, something good you receive or something that God happens to you when you not deserve it. It's a gift from God. Freely given by God. So a gift is it's just like you get a gift for Christmas. It is something that your parents give to you. You didn't, you might not have asked for it or you might have had a wish list to get it, but you, and sometimes you don't even deserve it. So a gift is a difference from a gift in your calling. Okay, that's a gift. Gift is given to you freely by God. You didn't ask for it, you, and sometimes we don't even deserve it. But it's given to you, maybe because of your works, maybe because God sees your heart. But that is what a gift is. What is your calling? Your calling is a summon from God to use your gift in the world. So a calling is different from your gift. A calling is from the Lord himself. It is a summon. A gift, don't, when you say I have a gift, it don't necessarily mean that you have a calling. A calling is something that urges, that plagues you, that, you, that everywhere you go, you can't rest in it. You feel like a tug. Something is pulling you, calling you to do something bigger than what you can even imagine. So a calling is a, and a gift is, 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 is two different things. And I just want us to talk about this because a lot of us have gifts and a lot of us have callings. So I wanted you to distinct, distinguish, to differentiate between the gift and the calling so you can say, you know what, Marlena, I have the calling, but I may not have the gift. Or you may have a gift, but God has not summoned you. Either way it goes, these both two things are given by God. The gift is given freely, something that we can have, a, a, a more so like a talent that we can have that uh, that God gives us. And I know I was looking this weekend as I was preparing for the message, and I was looking at these kids' talent shows, and um, this girl, she was on there. I believe her name is Angela Hale. Um, I, I follow her because she's just so anointed. She's I, I, want, I don't know her nationality, but she is just anointed. She has anointed voice. And then, and then when they get up there and call her out, they say, oh, this talented young girl, she's so talented. She's so talented. But when I look at her as being seven or eight years old, I said, this is not a talent. This is a gift from God. And whether or not she chooses to use that gift um, as a, to, to, to exceed in what God has called her to do, she, it is a gift. She can't be necessarily talented because she really hasn't lived her life. Seven years and eight years old is, is, is not really a talent because a talent is earned. A talent requires practice. A, a talent requires all kinds of, of, of ways that you can be, you can uh, esteem from a, a talent. She is seven, eight years old. She's clearly gifted. She has to live her life long enough to, to practice and, 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 to, and to, uh, to perform uh, for millions of people for so many millions of years to earn the name a talent. But clearly, this young girl was gifted. So that is what a gift is. But, she, but if you talk to her, she don't say, hey, I believe God is wanting me to do something else. I believe God is calling me to the universe. She don't say anything like that. She just, you know, don't think nothing of it. And that's what I want us to talk about. Because how many of you today say, Molina, I'm, I, I'm, I have a, a talent. I, I'm a musician. Um, I, I'm a great teacher. I'm a great um, speaker. And I just, I, I just, it's just a talent that I have. And you're not using it to further your gift in Christ. We all have talents. We all have gifts. But what are you doing with it? That's what I want to share with you today. You have a gift. Your gift is not going to be like my gift. Your gift is not going to be like your friend's gift. Your gift is not going to be like your neighbor's gift. But you have a gift. And you say, well, Molina, but God has blessed me with my hands. I can do anything with my hands. I can draw. I can make things. I can, I can do all kinds of stuff with my hands. And, and that may be true. But as God bless you in your hand, and if he bless you with your hand, and as you're doing what you're doing with your hands, are you esteeming, esteeming God? Are you giving homage to him and say, you know what? To God be the glory. We have our gift. 
Him, but it don't make room for us and we don't allow God to get the glory from it. That's what it means when it says that your gift will make room for you. If you are a teacher and you say, you know what, everybody, you know, you won the teacher award or, or you won the best janitor award or you won the best scientist award or you and you, you, you just top of the line in your class. You're the valedictorian. You, you whatever. You, you're just smart. How do you know it don't mean anything if you don't use your smartness to educate and draw somebody to God? That, that what it means is that our work down here will be in vain. God gives us all gifts. And so smartness is a gift. Intelligence is a gift. Being able to speak is a gift. Being able to prophesy is a gift. Being able to be the best of what you do on your job is a gift. But if you don't never bring nobody to Christ, if you don't never acknowledge God and say, you know what, Lord, I thank you for it. The Bible says we have to give thanks in all things. So I want to encourage somebody today. Yes, you're gifted. Yes, you can sing. Yes, you can play the piano. Yes, you can do all these great things. But what is it doing for you? Is it bringing you, like the scripture said in Proverbs, before great men? And you say, Molina, how would I get before great men? By giving God the praise. By allowing him and say, you know what? And you the one gave it to me. And you're the only one that can take it away. We have to give him praise in all things. Seven spiritual gifts that I looked up. And the first one is wisdom. And just like I said today, um, if, if you are smart and you and you can do, you're great on your job. You're great in everything that you do. And you're just so smart. Don't you know wisdom comes from God? In the book of, uh, of Samson, he asked God, you know, I don't want anything else. I just want to be smart. I just want to let, let, let me know what's coming down the road. Let me know what you got planned for me. Let me know my destiny. I don't want anything else, but I just want wisdom. Wisdom is a gift. And it comes from the Lord himself. So when we, we see wisdom and somebody tells us, oh, you're so smart. Oh, you really know that math. Oh, you really, you're really good at this or that. You need to say, I give all glory and thanks to God. Because he granted me the wisdom. He gave, he gave me the gift. Understanding. It's the same thing. When we read our word, and sometimes I read it, and I'm like, I, I don't understand it. And so we pray, so Lord, give me understanding. And Lord, and I go, all of a sudden, we go back and read it again, and then our eyes open up. Our eyes open up, because that's, that's when we pray and ask God for understanding. Guess what? He gives it to us. So we give him thanks and Lord, thank you. When you're doing a project for a, a, in college and, and you don't know what you don't know how to do, and you say, Lord, if you just I, I gotta turn this in. I gotta turn it in tomorrow. And I don't know where to start. And you say, Lord, help me with this project. Help me to get it done. And all of a sudden it begins, you read over the instructions again, and it begins to come to you, and you begin to understand that project. Well, guess what? This is a gift. This is a spiritual gift from the Lord. Understanding is a spiritual gift. Counsel, fortitude. Being able to talk to people, being able to listen to people's problems, being able to just be a blessing, encourage people, it's a gift. Because I've talked to people and sometimes you don't get an answer back or sometimes they don't understand it or sometimes they, they give you, talk to you and give you the wrong way to go. So when you begin to talk to somebody, when you begin to encourage somebody, when you begin to say, okay, I understand and can relate to them, can relate to their sympathy, their sympathy and their pain. That is a gift. It is one of the seven spiritual gifts. Knowledge, piety, and most importantly, the last but not least, the fear of God. You know, we live in a world today, we're not afraid of anything. We're not afraid of anything. We're not afraid of man. We're not afraid of God. We're not afraid of anything. And God is saying to have fear of me, or have fear of what I can do in your life, to have fear of consequences when you sin is a gift. And it's a spiritual gift. It's a spiritual discernment. Don't you know if we can discern and doing something wrong and say, you know what, don't do it. Don't you know that's a spiritual gift? And God is saying, if you don't do it and you fear me, it's a gift. So having a gift, that's when you, people say, they look at you and laugh, and you say, I ain't scared of what you're going to do. I'm scared of what God is going to do. 
and they look at you and laugh. But how many of you know that's okay because to have fear of the Lord God is a spiritual gift. And he rewards you for it. <clears throat> a spiritual gift is made to edify, exhort, and comfort the church. When we have these qualities of discernment, when we have these qualities of love, comfort, peace, being gifted in whatever the area in ministry. And when we have these qualities, guess what? It is made to edify the church. It is made to cover the church. It's not made to put nobody down. It's not made to judge. It's not made uh, to treat somebody bad. Because as God gives up these spiritual gifts, guess what? God can also take them away. So we have to make sure that we're using our gift. Whatever realm you're on, whatever, whatever you're doing in life, whatever you're doing, it is not to be taken lightly. If you're smart, you're intelligent, if you're a scientist, if you're a doctor, if you're a teacher, if you're a lawyer, whatever you're doing, if you do not use your gift that God has given you for his purpose and with it for his glorification, guess what? The Bible says that it will be taken from you. Just like he took the talents from the, from the man and gave it to someone else. Because he wanted to save it up for himself and hide it. If we don't use what he is calling us to do with our gifts and stop and let the pride go, man will fall. He will be reaping everything that he sown. Why? You ask me, why? I, I know these things and I know the gift that I may have. I know that I, I know I have a gift of this or a gift of that. Why am I not using it? The number one reason, perception. We don't want to use our gift because we're afraid of what somebody else going to think about us. Well, if I tell my family or my friends that I'm stepping out in faith and, and moving to California and I got a job out there. I don't know what they're going to think. They're going to discourage me. They're going to they're gonna put me down and say, girl, ain't nobody out there in California but you. Why are you going so far away from your family? We are so scared of what somebody else is going to think about our gift that we have. That is one of the number one reasons why we don't use our gift. Perception. What somebody else will think. What your family may think. Number two, provision. I can't do this by myself. How am I going to do this and I ain't got no money? How am I going to do this and I don't know how I'm going to even do it? I don't even know how to start it. I don't even know how to start a, 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 a daycare center. I don't even know. I don't got no money to do it. And so when we think like that in our head and those negative thoughts come in our head, guess what? We forget about what we wrote in our little journal that in two years we're going to start a daycare center. All of a sudden we close up the book. And we forget about what we, the vision we had two years ago. Because you say, I, when I look at my bank account, I don't have the money. Everybody around me said, girl, you know, good you well. You can't do no stuff like that. You, you ain't good with no kids. And we begin to have the negative thoughts come in our head and they come in our head and they plague us day in and they plague us day out. And all of a sudden what we thought was a dream, what we thought was a vision two years ago, we begin to shut down what God is calling us to do, what the gift that he's given us to do. And we say, you know what, we just ain't going to, I'm not going to be able to do it because I don't have the provision. This is why we do not walk in our gifts. Number three, fear. Fear. Not ready. Qualified. I'm going to mess it up. What if I start a daycare center and, and, and it's one of the kids get hurt and all of a sudden I'm being sued and all that. I ain't got time to deal with that. I ain't got no money. You looking at the future. Stuff ain't never happened and you already putting, putting bad luck on yourself. We don't want to mess up. Nobody likes to fail. Nobody likes to invest $100,000 and when it don't go that right and everybody says, I told you to put your 
your money in after stuff? And we tend to, to fall out of our investment and we tend to cry and we say, Lord, why? Why did you have it? Instead of just hanging in there and Lord is saying another year, if you go with me another year, I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to give you a double for your trouble. But we allow the fear, we allow the mess up. Because how many know you grow in your mess up? You grow in learning. You grow in learning the things that we messed up on. And you say, you know what? I messed up so bad, I ain't gonna never put another $50,000 in it. I ain't gonna never put my money in this no more. And all of a sudden, fear has creeped in and your vision, your future is now gone because you're afraid to go for another year. You're afraid, afraid to go for another two years. You're afraid to give it a chance again. And we allow it to creep in. And when fear creeps in, it is so hard to get it out. It's so hard to get it out. We are afraid that we're going to be let down, disappointed, a disappointment in our families, disappointment in our friends. We are so afraid. And that goes back into the number one perception, fear. Number four, we never realize our potential in our gift. Yeah, yeah, they told me I can sing ever since I was a little girl, girl. They've been telling me I can sing. I, saw, I grew up in the church singing. And we don't think nothing of it. But don't you know that gift, that singing voice, uh, playing the piano, or uh, whatever you do, that talent. Oh, you're so smart. You're the smartest person in class in math. You're the smartest person in class in science. Don't you know that that is a gift from God? And we're supposed to use it to glorify him? But we see something so mediocre. We've heard it all our lives. And we just let it fall to waste. But God is saying today, I want your gift. I want it to make room for you in 2022. I want you to realize your potential. I want you to realize that you're more than just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. That your gift will make room for you. Number five, we give up. We give up. Oh, girl, girl it is so hard running a business. I thought it was going to be easy. I thought running a business would be easy. I didn't know I was going to go through all this. Girl, a customer came in the other day and cussed me out. Now all of a sudden because of some people with some bad attitudes, you want to close the door on your business that you invested 200000 that you invested 100000 in because of some people, because it's too hard. You can't deal with the complications. I'm telling you about some things that we, why we are sitting down on our guilt. These are some things that God is saying today, I want you to get rid of because 2022, I can't have nobody sitting down. I want somebody to give to make room for them. I want somebody to give to bring them before great men. And he said, Marlena, I, all I can do, I, I know how to clean, I've been cleaning all my life. My mom's had a cleaning business, my daddy had a cleaning business, and they pass it on to me. And all I can do is clean. Well, you go in there and you clean. And as you're cleaning the floors, you tell somebody, how many of you know God is good? God is good to me. He blessed my mama. Then my mama passed it down to me. And now I'm here cleaning. I'm, this is all I know. But you're giving glory to God. And next thing you know, you got $100,000 in the business account and you don't even know where it came from. The Bible said it'll make room for you. Well, we can't allow the enemy to come in and steal us. Steal these things I just mentioned. The perception, the fear, the provision. Give it up. I'm afraid. We can't allow him to come in and steal it. Peter has told us that all of us have a gift. Whether you choose to use it or not, it is up to you. But I'm telling you something, you need to sit out, stop sitting down on your gift. And 2022 is a, is, a, is a year for provision. It's a year for restoration. The enemy has stolen it long enough. He's stolen everything from us. And it's time to go back and take back what 
said anything until I got older. Your gift will make room for you. All you got to do is say, Lord, I give it to you. It is not mine to hold down and sit on because if I sit on it, I'm going to be like the man that lost it and you're going to give it to somebody else. If you're a teacher, you be the best teacher you can be and you can encourage your students and you say, you know what? You have to live right. You have to love your brother or sister. You got to love your neighbor. You can, you, can do, you can be the best teacher you can do by, by also giving credit and honor due to the Lord himself, Jesus Christ. The Bible said that your gift will make room for you. How does it make room for you and bring you before great men? By acknowledging who gave it to you. By acknowledging who gave it to you. And so many rich people lose their gift because they didn't give nothing to God. Your gift will make room for you. You don't have to do anything. Just use it. And you say, Molly, I've been using my gift. I've been singing since I was 12 years old. And ain't nobody said anything. I want to be a record dealer. I want to be a, a top of the number one charts. But you just keep on singing. You just keep on singing. And Moses, Moses was over 40 some years old before his gift made room for him. He didn't even, he couldn't even talk. He couldn't do anything. And God brought him before great men. So many people got Esther were brought before great men. She didn't think she was worthy. She didn't think she was nobody. She was just a slave. She didn't think she didn't have no money. She didn't have anything. And God brought her before great men. Why? Because she had a gift. And what was that gift? Her gift of grace. Her gift of beauty. Her gift of a heart for God. If you want God to move in something that you're doing in 22, God has said, I'll move in that thing. I'll move in it, but you need to make up your mind. You're going to allow your gift to make room. Not only to bring you before great men, but your gift to make room for me. So I blessed you with it. I gave it to you. I formed you in your mother's room, and I put it in your heart. I knew you was going to be a best-selling author. I knew you were going to be a minister to win over millions of souls. I knew you were going to be the best teacher that was out there. Bringing children to love God and to love themselves and to encourage them. I knew it when I put it down in you. I'm telling somebody today, make up in your mind to stop sitting on your gift. And allow your gift to make room for you. God said, if you allow your gift to make room for me, guess what? I'm going to bring you before a great man. If you don't know God today for yourself, if you say, Monina, how can I ask God to, to bless me in my gift? How can I ask God to bless me in my talents? And I don't even know who the man is. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.